Hi, my name is Eddie, and I'm really keen to share the community stories so we can all get inspired by different people's journey into tech, some of the challenges they have. I really want to keep it authentic. And so I'm super excited to have episode two today and we're going to get straight into it. So I decided to create this series called Developer Stories to share with you. And today I have with me Adelina and we've been geeking out on Twitter for quite a while. So it's really great to actually have a call and share Adelina's story with you. So Adelina, please give yourself an introduction and tell us about yourself. Uh, hi, Eddie. Uh, thanks for having me today. Uh, my name is Adelina Simeon. Um, I'm Romanian and I grew up in Denmark and I now live in London. I've been living in London for about eight years, so I would say London is definitely my home, but it's also resulted in this mishmash of an accent that's impossible to place. I am a gopher first, which is what the Go community call themselves, and a tech evangelist second. Uh, I'm a tech evangelist at Form3, which is a B2B payments technology provider in London. I started out as a Java engineer and I converted to Go in 2018. Wow, nice. Yes, Go is uh, very, very popular and uh, Gopher, their, their uh, mascot is brilliant too. And uh, that's so cool. And by the way, about your accent, I love it. I love the, <laughs> the mixed accent. I think it's just super cool, like when you can't place it. So I try and I hope one day to have a mixed accent with all my traveling, yeah. but I think it's pretty, pretty British through and through though. So what are you working on at the moment at work and are you doing any open source on the side? So um, I just want to share a little bit about what life as a DevRel is like because I think that would be quite interesting for people to hear. So I was the first DevRel hire at Form3 and my role, if I were to, you know, just sum it up, is to share the tech stories of our engineers and to let people know all, all the technologies that we use and kind of like the difficult problems that we solve and share that with the community. And um, DevRel work is quite cyclical. So by that, we mean that conference season is usually May, June and September, October. So in those months, it's like a really hardcore going to events. And in the off season, you'll be like prepping for events or answering CFPs, as well as like producing content, just so you can have your community engaged. And so, you know, you don't just like produce things in the on season, as we call it. So most of my role is balancing these kinds of priorities when it comes to getting ready for events, organizing events, getting the merch ready. Everybody likes a nice t-shirt um, and also sharing content on social media. Yeah, That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. I love that. So what did you do before getting into tech? So it's great to hear where you are now, but I want to go all the way back to the beginning and, and see what you did before tech and then how you kind of got into tech so we can join the, the two ends together. So I studied computer science. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in IT engineering, as we called it in Denmark, and a master's degree in mathematical modeling, which is a vein of applied mathematics. Um, and I studied both of those at the Technical University of Denmark. And I didn't have like exposure to programming before I started, uh, before I went to university. I was just kind of like a nerdy kid that was good at math. I felt like if you study theoretical mathematics, it would be really, really difficult and hard to really like anchor yourself into it. So my brother, my older brother recommended to me to try and go to um, IT engineering. And I went as a, as an experiment because you know, in the first foundation years, you can transfer your credits and go study something else if you wanted to. But yeah, I got there and I just, it was such a challenge and I really loved it. So I ended up staying. That's awesome. That's really really cool that's great i'm so glad you ended up staying and now you're helping so many people as well with your courses and your content so that's so cool so what were the challenges that you faced getting into tech and how did you overcome them i must say um university was pretty brutal um i'm one of these people that doesn't intuitively get things i have to understand things really in depth uh, before any of it makes sense. So um, I had a hard time getting to understand the fundamentals and even it took me months to even get my first piece of code compiling from scratch. And I mean, granted, I learned Java, so that's more verbose than we're used to, but you know, it was really a struggle. And um, as an Eastern European living in one of the most expensive countries in the world, 
old, I had to work. So I worked 20 plus hours per week alongside my studies. And I was always really, really jealous of the people that like had all the time in the world to look into things and try things out as well as, you know, go to all the university events like the guilds and stuff. But in the end, I graduated, I managed to graduate. However I managed, I managed. And I started working as a graduate at Accenture. And one of the things that I want to leave the audience with or the people watching is that because I had to kind of hustle and paid my bills, I ended up getting a part time job and um, the part time job was in the financial risk department uh, of a mortgage bank and of a Danish mortgage bank. And I was helping the risk team with, you know, like simple data transformations in SAS, which stands for statistical analysis software and, you know, just doing little things to help the team like data transformations, building tables. I wasn't really involved in like the quant side or like the modeling side of things. But this ended up being such a huge differentiator when it came to getting my first job because I had these things on my CV that were like outside of school and you know it really helped me get started. So I want to say to students out there that these kinds of things are so important even if you don't get like the best grades if you have some kind of like remotely relevant experience this can be such a huge differentiator so what are your current challenges that maybe the eddie hub community and my youtube community and twitter community can all all help you out with my next project that I'd like to ask the community to help me with is that I'd like to do a Go course or maybe like a collection of material. I don't know exactly the format it will take to help people who are just getting started into tech to pick up Go as their first programming language. I feel like that Go isn't typically seen as your starter language and people are like converting from another language to it. And maybe the reason they do that is because of the strong typing. However, like once you get your um, your head around it, then Go is like a very simple language to use. And I think it would open up a lot of opportunities if you learned it as your first language. So definitely I'd love to hear from people um, in the community that maybe have taken on that journey and how I can support them and what material I can do to help you out with this. Oh, I love that. It'd be great. I know uh, in the community, Go has been mentioned and, and same with Java and so forth, yeah. but Java, not always not in a positive light. I love Java, so I get really upset and offended when people say bad things about Java. But um, yeah, I know people do like um, Go, so that could be really interesting. I know people, and I definitely people think that, like, so, yeah, you know, Java's on the way out, but Go is definitely on the rising. And it, I think it'll definitely open up career opportunities mm -hmm. to people getting started into tech. Exactly. And I think if people get started with a language like Go or uh, Java, then I think other languages become easier for them to pick up. Whereas if they start off in JavaScript and go the other way, I think it's, it's a bit more challenging. So um, I think it's going to be a really useful course. Can't wait. What resources uh, do you use to answer any tech questions you have or, and to improve, you know, and learn new skills? So I'm a little bit old school, um, you know, I'm also not, in, you know, young and hip anymore. So I do learn from books and it's also because of the way that my brain works. Like I said, I have to understand things before any kind of usage comes out of my knowledge. So my number one technical book that I would recommend to people is Building Microservices by Sam Newman. And it really helped me understand distributed systems, like because I worked for a long time with um, the monolith in Java, going to distributed systems and microservices for me was really difficult. And I really found that book really useful. And when it comes to DevRel, Sam Julian's blog and book are really excellent with getting started and understanding what the life is all about. Just like a little tip for people who are maybe interested in getting into conference speaking. I started conference speaking um, just to challenge myself and boost my self-esteem self and self-confidence. So maybe people are interested in doing that as well. It can be difficult to find out when the deadlines for CFPs are. So I use the Twitter account Tech Daily CFP. I follow it and they tweet when there are updates about conferences. So I think definitely that would be useful for people as well. 
in 2021, I've gone to two GopherCons. So I've spoken about serverless at GopherCon Europe and about NATS at GopherCon UK. You can find both of those talks on YouTube for you to watch. I will be speaking on the 2nd of March. I will be speaking at Cloud Native London Meetup. So you can sign up on Meetup and it's a free event. And in May, I'll be speaking. I'll have the honor of speaking at DevOps UK. Awesome. Uh, we'll put some links in the description below. Uh, where do you find support from the tech community? Be that technical support or encouragement or motivation? Where, where do you kind of hang out in the tech world? Um, yeah, so to be honest, my favorite part of being an engineer when I was an engineer, it was to work with other people and learn from them. Um, so we all, as you know, as well, Eddie, we have to constantly learn and upskill and challenge ourselves. So I really like doing one to ones with either less experienced or more experienced engineers than me and I'm always looking for a mentor so I would definitely say if you're getting started out to look for a mentor either online or um, as one of your colleagues if you want you can reach out to me and I can mentor you because I actually don't have any mentors uh, many any mentees outside of work right now and when it comes to um, there are such great communities on Slack so I really like the uh, Gophers Slack channel um, so I'm I'm there. I don't always post. I kind of like lurk and write to when people are asking questions a little bit. And when it comes to things DevRel, there's the DevRel Collective Slack space. So I go there as well. And I really like that um, there is a specific channel for content share. So like, oh, you can see what the DevRel professionals are doing. That's awesome. And you are one of the DevRel professionals. So uh, I think it's great that you're there sharing your content, helping lots of people. I love it that you've just said, you know, if anyone wants to need a mentor that you would, you know, you're looking for mentees. Yeah. I think that's great. I think more and more people should do that. Um, so I think that's awesome. A big, yeah, big yeah, shout out to definitely. you. I think that's really, really great. And any mentee <laughs> would be super lucky to have you. So that, that sounds, that sounds exciting. So who inspires you in tech? I know you inspire a lot of people, but who um, inspires you? So to be honest, uh, there are so many rock star devrels and you're one of them, Eddie, then you've got Angie Jones or Lorna Mitchell. And the <laughs> thing you. that I really am in awe about all of you is the fact that you have seemingly infinite amounts of enthusiasm and time whenever you talk and when you share content and because I'm still starting out like every time I do a talk I just have to go have a nap afterwards I just get extremely drained and exhausting so I'm trying to you know really channel you and learn from you you know big shout out to you Eddie even for doing this video and giving so much back to the community and when it comes to instructors because you know like I'm trying to be an instructor and like really learn from those who are better than me. I definitely think Bill Kennedy is the best Go instructor I've ever seen. I was lucky to attend one of his workshops at GoForCon, remotely at GoForCon Europe, and he's such a clear presenter. And the thing that I like most about Bill is that it seems like there's no end to his knowledge. You know, that it just seems like there's like no bottom, no, no end to it. You can just ask him any question and he'll just delve into it. But at the same time, he keeps it simple to begin with and he adjusts according to what his audience wants to know about so yeah you mentioned so many awesome people i'm really honored to be in that list as well thank you so much but i think you should be in that list as well a big shout out to you you inspire so many people as well so uh, it's, it's just great i love it i love your energy but you know a secret kind of note i <laughs> often do go nap after live streams or talks and so forth um so i think a lot of people do do that it, it is so much fun and it's so tiring I remember doing like a seven hour live stream. I had so much fun, but I was exhausted afterwards. But I was yeah. so buzzing as well. You know, you kind of got that kind of you're buzzing, but you're really tired. And it was, I was a bit delirious, but it was definitely worthwhile. Um, it was it was great fun. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so where would you like to be in the next few years? What's, uh, what's so your goal? I definitely see my career as just experimenting and seeing what I like and what I don't like. And I think that's a really healthy way to look at it. 
So once it's no longer fun, you can just try something else. And if you don't like that, you can always pull back to it. So I'm really grateful that I got my first role into DevRel um, and I'm grateful to Form3 for giving me the opportunity. And I'm just enjoying exploring this kind of role and seeing if it's for me, if I'm always going to be exhausted after public speaking. <laughs> and I'm going to keep exploring this area definitely in the next few years. I'll probably just go back to being a backend um, and then see what else is out there for me. The cool thing about tech is that you have so many opportunities to craft your own role. Don't be afraid to try something new, even though you might not have the experience. You know, there are people going from engineer to PM. You don't have to be a DevRel. Or you can even, you know, start, be an open source contributor like Eddie. You can just try things out and see how it goes. I love that. I was going to say something very similar. I'm so glad you did because that's given me a clip. I've just marked it. It's given me a clip for socials to post later on today. So that's awesome. Love that. Because, yeah, tech is so massive that, you know, people can keep pivoting and changing and still stay in tech. And, and I love that. So super true. Thank you for that. What do you wish you knew when you first started out? If you could look back at yourself and give yourself some advice, what would you Yeah, be? so um, first of all, don't be demotivated. The gig is hard for everyone. And as we consume tech at unprecedented rates, the systems that we maintain and build are getting more and more complicated. So actually the gig has never been harder than it is right now. So don't beat yourself up if you're struggling. And another thing I wanted to share a couple of tips if you're going to uh, be interviewing for your first DevRel role and I will write these down into a blog post as well but i'm just going to give you a quick run through right now so first off you don't need a huge social media following to get into devrel but you do need to have some kind of presence so if you're thinking about it then do open your twitter accounts and start tweeting things that are interesting to you these will be the things that the talent team looking to hire will look into and they will see if how you engage with the community so think of starting to build a portfolio on social media. Then also, you don't need a huge portfolio of talks. I only had a handful of talks when I got hired because they are so hard to prep for and they're so time consuming that I understand that it can be a daunting task. But you should think about, again, putting a portfolio together of both written and video content. So start the blog either on Dev2 or I scaffolded a really simple um, blog with Jekyll and GitHub pages. And the reason I did that is because I wanted it to be pink, so it's pink now. But you can just, if I were starting over, I would use Dev2, so you can just start there and write a couple of blog posts about anything that you find interesting and just to provide some samples to people that are looking out and assessing you. DevRel, no matter if you're an entry-level DevRel or a more experienced DevRel, you're expected to be a self-starter. So definitely come up and research the company that you're interviewing with and concrete ideas about things that you could contribute to their presence. As engineers, we're not really that used to researching companies and coming up with ideas before interviews, but try to shift that mindset a little bit and think about what you could bring to the table when you're going to the DevRel interview. These would be my top tips. I wish I would have known them. Um, I went to a couple DevRel interviews completely unprepared and I'm happy to, sh to be able to share this with you so you don't squander a really nice opportunity. Um, and these are things that you can easily fix. I love that, really great tips. What would you say to someone in the community who's currently stuck? By stuck, I mean maybe they're not sure tech is for them, maybe they're feeling demotivated uh, and they're not sure if they can get an internship or get a job. What would you suggest how they can maybe get onto the, the next step? If they're also so I'm going to talk a well. little bit about being demotivated about interview rejections here. It's really, really easy to overestimate what others know and underestimate your own skill. You might think that everyone else is being so much more successful. I'm only getting rejections and that's not the case. I've gotten rejections, as many rejections at the beginning of my career as later on in my career, because even though you have experience and you start to hone in your skills, the expectations just keep, the bar keeps getting raised and the expectations are higher and higher. And sometimes it's just not your day or it's just not your job. So try and, 
emotionally distance yourself from the interview rejection and see it as just a subjective piece of feedback. Yes, the subjective piece of feedback can be useful and you can use it to see where you can improve. I've gotten some great feedback from some companies that I've taken on board. So for example, one of my feedbacks was you don't know that much about databases. So I went and I learned about them and how they work. But equally, if the feedback is bad or you don't agree with it, then just chuck it in the bin and move on. The interview is not there to objectively assess your technical skill. It's there to subjectively see or subjectively assess whether you can do the job and fit into their team. And it's nothing more than that. And I've actually written about a blog post about this as well, because I'm really keen to stop people feeling like they are worth nothing after an interview rejection. And you can see it on my blog um, at adelinasimian.dev if you want to hear my thoughts about it. So yeah, keep your spirits high and keep trying. There, You do have a place in tech. I love that. Really love that ending. Perfect. Thank you so much. That was great. Really motivational, really uh, actionable tips as well for people. So thank you so much. And you're so organized. You know what's coming up even before I do, which is so good. You don't even need me. I'm, I might as well just go. Like, this is brilliant. You're making my life so much easier. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was just looking over to my right because I heard some weird noise. Sorry, I'm still not used to living in a tropical country. <laughs> Maybe like a lizard like, coming through. Over there from... <laughs> oh my God, there's so many lizards. Let's not get started on lizards. And um, yes, so as long as it doesn't come near me, it's okay. 